Today, we're going to make collage pieces that you can use in mixed media or in journals. We're going to incorporate different pieces of paper, scrapbooking, book pages, printed paper like gel prints, and a little bit of stitching. So 99% paper, 1% stitching. And it produces very unique and creative results. As you can see, I devoted one color to each of the snippets, and then I emphasized even further with the stitching. Now you could do something as simple as a straight stitch, a back stitch, anything that you can pull through the paper to make a stitch, or you could go a little more advanced and work on different stitches that you have in your repertoire. Either way, you want to just increase the texture in your piece and draw the eye with your stitches. Hi, I'm Daniela Mellon, an author and artist, and I'm going to show you my process for making these little collage snippets. First thing I do is I select a neutral paper, and here I have one that's kind of beige. I cut them into rectangles, and this is my starting point. I can trim them down further if I don't like the size or if the shape is too big. I can also combine them if they're too small. And then from there, I just select a color. I just find it easier to work monochromatically. So I'll choose a color, either all red or all blue. And then I just add different snippets to make my collage design. And I keep it fairly simple. And this gives me some opportunity that when I put it in my book or my journal or in my mixed media piece, I can layer over it further. So here I have all the papers that I'm gonna to use to create my collage. Then what I do is I put that beige paper down as my main element. And I wanna make sure that the other collage pieces hang over it, either on the top, the bottom, or the sides. I don't want them to be just within that square or rectangle. I like the pieces to come out from behind, to stick on top, and to dangle with even the threads to make that even more interesting. In this example, I'll take some black and white and gray to use with my beige. I'll take some time playing with the paper, again, starting with the basis, that beige paper, and I just build up and around. I can stop whenever I want, or I can keep going and make it as elaborate as I'd like. From here, after I have my design, I'll adhere it down to my paper, carefully burnishing it, and I just use a glue stick for this process. Once I have that down, I burnish it even further, and then I give it a good 15 minutes to let it dry. I'll come back and I'll consider how I want to add my stitching. Each piece is different, so there's no right or wrong answer. After I have a design in mind, and I see this empty spot right here that I think I wanna add something to, maybe just a beautiful circle, I'll make my sketch with pencil, and in this case, I'm tracing around a bottle cap to get that nice round shape. After I have my sketch and pencil, I'll take a sharp awl or a needle, put a few pieces of fabric underneath my piece, and I'll puncture the holes. Because I'm dealing with paper, and in some cases, multiple layers of paper, when I puncture the holes ahead of time, it makes for very easy sewing. So I make as many holes as I want to make whatever size stitches I want. The fewer the holes, the larger the stitch. Once I have my holes pierced into my paper, I'll thread a needle, not the end with the color of embroidery floss that I'd like to use, and I'll start my stitches. Now you can use any stitch you like. I'm gonna start by going in at the top here around 12 o'clock of this circle, and then going to the next hole and pulling it through. I'll come up the next hole and go around and around and repeat this until my circle is complete. And as you can see, the stitches are fairly wide and fairly good distance apart. After that's complete, I can decide if I like it the way it is, and I do like the way that looks. It makes it a very coherent circle. Or I could add another layer to really tighten up the circle. And why not? I'll add another row of stitches. So I go in there, add the other row of stitches just to make that circle complete and closed. Thank you. 
once it's done and I have my last stitch made, I'll flip my piece over, make a knot at the end, clip it, and then just secure it down. And there I have my finished snippet. Now this is the process I use for all my snippets. You can add more colors. You don't have to stick to one color like I do. You can use a different shape instead of that rectangular basis or a square. You can use a circle or even a torn piece of paper. The choices are yours. Thanks for joining me today.